you're listening to FBC Radio on 16.9. Good morning, church and community. Today is Sunday, the 21st of March, 2021. And that means tomorrow we will have safely made it through exactly a whole year since that first Sunday lockdown on the 22nd of March, 2020. So give yourself a round of applause for making it through. Well done. Bravo. Bravo. Today is also a significant day in history because it is... Census Day. This is the day that comes around once every 10 years where we are asked to record where we're living on that particular day and then provide some extra information such as our age, our marital status, what job we do and what we believe in terms of our religion. And then all of this data helps to get a glimpse of what the nation is like on that particular day. And the idea is that all of this information will help to understand uh, where pockets of deprivation exist, how we're doing as an aging population, try and work out how we're doing in regard to employment, and to some degree would help to measure something of the the spiritual state of the nation. And then all of this information is gathered together, hopefully that uh, the, the government and the local services will be able to use it to identify where needs exist within a community and then help to address them. One of the things about the census is that everybody counts. Everybody in your household makes a unique contribution to the information on that census. There is nobody else in the whole of the world who has an exact same mix of details as you. Therefore, you are important. Everybody counts. You count. And we find a similar message in the Bible. Jesus once said that all the hairs on your head are numbered. (laughs) And some of us perhaps have far too many at the moment and are desperately in need of a haircut. But the idea there is that God knows everything about us because all of us count to him. He, however, doesn't need us to complete a census and provide, us, provide him with all the details about us because he actually knows more about us than we know about ourselves. The psalmist put it this way. You have searched me, Lord. You know me. You know me when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You're familiar with all of my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. He knows all about the challenges that we've been facing during this last year, right from the very start of the first lockdown. And he also knows all that we're going to face between now and March 2022. How wonderful is that? Some of us don't even know what's happening next Wednesday, let alone what's happening next year. But God does, and therefore we can put our trust in him for the future as well as the present. And we can be convinced that just as God has been faithful in the past, then he always will be through all of our days. And therefore, we can count on that. We can count on him. Now today, Marcus has put together the service and is overseeing it, and we'll hear from him a little bit later. So I'm very happy about that because it means I can sit back and relax today. So let's start this service, shall we, by committing to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that we don't come to a God who is distant, nor come to a God who is unknown. Instead, we thank you that you're always with us, and you know everything about us. Thank you for sending Jesus into the world because you love us and want us to be with you for all eternity. Thank you, Lord, for the undeserved favour that you've brought upon us through Jesus so that we can be recipients of your amazing grace. I pray that today, as we worship you, we may find your joy rising up within us as we remember afresh all the wonderful things that you've done for us. And we pray that our offering of worship to you today will bring you joy also. And so we commit the service to you now, asking you to speak to us and receive thanksgiving from us. In Jesus' name. Amen.
And now it's time for Family News. This week, as usual, the pop-in cafe on Tuesday at 2, the early morning prayer meeting on Wednesday at 7.30 in the morning and the FBC Sunday Zoom at 11.45 this morning will all be taking place, as will the prayer Zoom tonight at 8pm. All of the Zoom codes for all of these meetings were sent out in last week's weekly news. Congratulations to Karen and family for finally completing their winter jigsaw, which they started way back on Boxing Day. Well done for persevering to the end, and thank you for keeping us in the picture. In this year of 2021, the organisation Hope Together are encouraging churches to join with them on the 21st day of each month to engage in a prayer walk within our communities praying for those who are living in the houses as they walk past them. So as today is the 21st day of the month, why not go out for a short or long walk today and pray for your community? Asking God to bless them physically, mentally, emotionally, socially and spiritually. And why not take a picture of your feet walking the streets as you pray and then send it to our office email so we can put them up on our Facebook page. Speaking of prayer, as part of our Easter programme this year, on Good Friday, we'll be turning the lounge in our church building into a prayer space with a number of COVID-safe activities to stimulate prayer. People are encouraged to book one of the hours between 9 and 5 on Good Friday to come and pray in the building. Or if you'd like to be involved online, then you can book an hour from between 5pm and 11pm on Good Friday or from 6am until 11pm on Easter Saturday night. Just head over to www.24-7prayer.com forward slash sign up, forward slash 2F888E to book your slot. This year we will be broadcasting a Good Friday service over YouTube as well as an Easter Sunday morning service and both will be broadcast at 10.30. You can book a seat to come and watch the Easter morning service with others in the church building if you'd like to. Sunday seats can always be booked by going to our website and following the links. Whilst all of today's family news has been important, the top story of the week this week must go to Tony and Diana, who yesterday celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary. <laughs> they were married in 1971 at Four Oaks Methodist Church in the West Midlands. They met in 1966 at a summer carnival dance held at Sutton Coalfield Town Hall. Interestingly, both of them were reluctant to go out that night. Tony, being halfway through exams, was hauled along by a good mate 
and Diana needed encouragement by her sister. Tony and Diana write, So here we are, 55 years on, still loving and enjoying each other's company. God has been so good to us. He has given us much more than we could ever have hoped for. A caring and loving family and church family and many wonderful friends along the way. Big congratulations to both of you for reaching this fantastic milestone. We pray that God will bless you this weekend and for many years to come. And that brings us to the end of this week's...
Hello and welcome to our happiness quiz, where we'll be finding out how much we know about happiness. I'm joined today by two contestants. We have John, who comes from sunny South Africa, and we have Ross, who comes from miserable Middlesex. Good morning. How are you both doing? John, you feeling happy? You feeling ready for the quiz? Excellent. I'm born ready. Excellent. And uh, how, about, how about you, Ross? How are you feeling? And what time do you think this will finish? It'll be, it'll be quick. Won't, okay. won't, won't take too long. And All right. Okay. All right, then. So let's get, let's get straight into it. So the uh, first question will be to you, John, and it's which country is happier, Afghanistan or Finland? That one sounds like an easy answer. That one certainly has got to be Finland. You're absolutely correct by pretty much every criteria, um, the amount of money, um, freedom of choice, generosity, lack of corruption, Finland beats Afghanistan. So over to you, Ross, for your first question. Which country is happier, Austria or South Sudan? Mm, can't imagine either of them being particularly happy. Um, <laughs> not much not much joy there i guess south sudan you're absolutely correct that's one point each and in fact austria is so much happier than south sudan that just money and social support and healthy life expectancy is enough to beat all of the criteria for south sudan he said south sudan was the right answer did he i didn't listen properly he was wrong he was wrong. I'll, I'll take that back. <clears throat> one point. One point ahead. Thank you very much, Mister Mister Sunny South Africa. So, one point in the lead. Question to you, John. Which country is happier, Italy or France? That's a. F I would think that's a fine margin. But I would think. I'll go with France, just because I know France a little bit better than Italy. You'd be absolutely correct. That's, that's two points and just a small margin in terms of social support and money. Second question to you, Ross. Which country is happier, New Zealand or Canada? A daft question, really. Well, which one has a better rugby team? Well, wouldn't go to either, but I guess New Zealand. You're absolutely correct. That's, um, that's one point to you. Um, and the only difference is how people perceive corruption, which is the small advantage to New Zealand. So that's enough about countries. Let's move on to, um, to some other things that may or may not make us happy. So question to you, John. Are people happier when they have more positive experiences or fewer negative ones? I would definitely more positive ones. Yes. You stick with that? Yes, yeah, definitely have yeah. more positive experiences. Absolutely right, that's, that's three points to you. Um, Ross, your, your question, what makes people happier? Having an increase in salary for yourself or earning more than those around you? I'd say neither, really. There's not much happiness in pay, is there? Um, but I guess least miserable would probably be knowing that you earn more than other people. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. That's, that's two points to you. So into the, into the final questions. So John, which makes people happier? Increased social support or a longer healthy life expectancy? Um, I would say, <clears throat> can you repeat the question? So it's either social support or healthy life expectancy? I would say social support, better social support, because that's much more immediate. You're absolutely correct, that's, um, that's four points. And Ross, your final question. If you wanted to get better at maths and reading, should you do some exercise, yes or no? Daftest question yet. Um, what's that got to do with happiness? Um, I guess, yeah, get some exercise. You are absolutely correct. Thank you very much for your time. You look at yourself in the mirror. I'd like to say this has been a pleasure. <laughs> anyway, we'll look at some more happiness later on.
Rachel is going to lead us now in a time of prayer. Lord, we come before you this morning to be in your presence and to sit at your feet. We've come here this morning to be reminded of who you are and how we want you to be the centre of our lives. We thank you, Lord, for your love and care for us. We thank you for Jesus and the sacrifice that he made so that one day we will be with you in heaven. Lord, we want to thank you for all that we have, the roofs over our heads, for food on our table, for family and friends. And Lord, we particularly want to thank you for the medical care that we have in this country. For some of us this year, we have become even more aware of the care that we receive through the NHS. Lord, we pray for all the people who work within the NHS. We ask for a spiritual and physical refreshing. We ask that you would give them energy and wisdom as they continue to serve the communities that they work in. We're sorry, Lord, when we try to live life without you, when we push through life in our own strength, and then wonder why we are so exhausted spiritually, mentally and physically. We ask now, Lord, that you would be near to us through the presence of your Holy Spirit. Speak into each of our lives, Lord. Help us to put aside the things that take us away from you and bring us closer, Lord. Help us to find the time to spend time with you, refocusing and refreshing our faith, hope and energy. Lord, we bring before you this beautiful broken world that we live in. We hear so much on the news of people abusing power. Lord, we ask that you would speak into the hearts and minds of the world's leaders. Give them wisdom and discernment, Lord, as they look to lead. We pray for Christian people in leadership, that you will give, keep them close to you and give them a voice that speaks out and is heard, supporting those who need food, homes, care and justice. We pray for a softening of hardened hearts so that they will see the suffering of the people and change things. Father God, we bring before you our Christian brothers and sisters who are suffering today because of their love for you. Lord, give them the strength they need to get through each day. Fill them with the presence of your Holy Spirit and give them your hope, Lord. We pray for organisations like Release International, who look to shine a light on the persecutions of Christians. Help them to create positive relationship with governments around the world and give them a voice that will be heard. We pray for Nazanin Radcliffe. We ask for her to be returned to the UK to be with her husband and child. We pray for a softening of the hearts of the Iraqi leaders who are keeping her captive. And we pray for her family, that you would be their comfort and peace. We pray for the poorer countries of this world who are having to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray for the provision of vaccine for all those who need it, Lord. We bring before you our own country. We particularly bring before you those who are struggling to make ends meet because of job losses. We ask that you would help those in government to know how to move forward and provide food and housing for all those that need it. We again pray for our government, Lord, that you would give them wisdom and humility as they seek to lead our country. Help them to make good decisions. Give them wisdom as they seek to bring our country through this awful time. Lord, we bring before you the members of our own church family who are suffering at the moment, whether with ill health, grief, job losses or anxiety. Fill them with the presence of your Holy Spirit, Lord. Give them your healing, rest, peace, comfort and provision and show us how we can support and encourage them. We thank you that you hear our prayers, and we ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Before Marcus speaks, Richard and Juliet are going to read some favourite Bible readings from some of the members of our congregation. 
Be still and know that I am God. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair. He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Happiness is a journey. It's not a destination. And we recognise, probably a bit like the landscape behind me, sometimes we're at the peak of the heights, euphoric. Other times we're in the depths of the sadness. And those ups and downs are going on throughout our lives. So what is it that makes us happy? Is it something we're born with? Is it something that happens to us during our upbringing? Is it circumstances? Well, yes, it's all of those things, but there's more to it. There's the choices we make. That has a real influence on our happiness. If we take two groups of people, one of whom are paraplegics and one of whom are lottery winners, then we all know that on the day that their life is changed, the lottery winner is so much happier than the paraplegic. But as the weeks turn into months, turn into years, just into one year, then the happiness of both groups has become the same. Both groups have adapted to their circumstances and the paraplegics have reached a point where they're back at their original level of happiness. What I'd like to do today is to just talk about some of the things I've learned about happiness. I've listened to podcasts, I've read books, I've met some really wonderful people who've been able to share stuff and... I've tried lots of it. Some of it went well, some of it not so well. So let's look at some of the things that went, that went better. And if we begin at the very beginning, literally into Genesis and the creation of the world, God saw all that he has made and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. And on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. Now, I don't know how you feel after a, after a busy week, whether you look back on it and you think, that was very good. And then a day later, at the end of the weekend, oh, I feel really refreshed. Maybe that's you, but I suspect not always. And what is it that causes us to not be satisfied with, with what's happened? Well, one of the things that goes on is that maybe we're not all that kind to ourselves in terms of how we think about our week. Maybe I have a week and it's going to be a bit of a five out of ten week. That's really all that's possible. And then some stuff goes my way, some things work out a bit better than expected, and we get it up to a six. That's really good, right? That's plus one. But there's a bit of us that says, yeah, but surely like a ten... 10 is the number, so that's a minus 4. So maybe we could be a little bit kinder when we reflect back on how our week's been and think, do you know what was what was actually possible? Did I did I manage to get as much as I could out of this out of this week? So we can also be our own worst critics. Maybe we've had a little visit from um, the unhelpful voice in our head. The one that doubts us, the one that says, oh, are you sure? Maybe this will go wrong. Oh, that's not fair. This isn't right. This should be somebody else's problem. That's not our best friend. But 
let's call this voice Grumpy FM, the radio station that plays all the things that can go wrong for us. And probably most spectacularly, we maybe get a visit from Grumpy FM in the middle of the night. That might be something that wakes us up in what really feels like a nightmare, that we started off with just a little thing that led to a medium thing that led to a bigger thing. And that's a succession of thoughts, increasingly catastrophic, that doesn't help us. Now, there's a really good reason why we have this inner voice. So way back in time, we might have been at risk of being chased by a bear, maybe there was a saber-toothed tiger. There were things that required us to immediately do something. What were we going to do? Were we going to run away? Were we going to freeze and play dead? Or were we going to stand and fight? And we don't live in a place where there are saber-toothed tigers and, and bears, but that instinct's still there. And actually, it would be it can be super helpful because there isn't always time to convene the committee of the rational mind to think well do you think it's a bear do you think it's nearby do you think it's eaten today we just need to get on with it the problem comes when we're maybe not in a life and death situation and we can find ourselves feeling a little bit grumpy and we're not quite sure why and then maybe depending on how the conversation's going the grumpiness builds and builds and and we start to feel the tension building up in our building up in our shoulders we maybe feel our breathing's changed maybe find our mind racing and we're not quite sure why and sometimes there'll be somebody else in the same conversation who's going through the same transformation into becoming grumpy and what can often happen is one of you is now ready to spark off the other and so if the other person gets there first with their voice of grumpy then it's really likely that we now feel a little bit attacked and we want to go and defend ourselves or maybe we want to go and hide or maybe we don't want to say anything so what can we do well the first thing is to recognize that this is what's happening that this is actually in the reptilian brain bit of us that is there for a good purpose but that's not very helpful now. So what we need to do is to take control of the situation and to buy ourselves some time. So maybe that's a quick prayer, maybe that's counting to ten, maybe that's a few deep breaths. We now have got a little bit more control over the situation so the next thing to do is to try and buy ourselves a little bit more time to get a bit calmer so now would be a good time to if we can stay quiet to do that if it's important to say something maybe to just really calmly reflect on some of the facts of the situation and maybe we could build those facts into beginning to think about what's the outcome we want let's move the conversation on to the future and how to move forward and if it's proved to be a really difficult conversation and a tough topic then it's okay to say this is a big subject. This is something that maybe we could come back to. So that's taken us to the point where we've managed to find a way through. But quite often, once we've been in one of these fight, flight, freeze situations, then we feel tense and sometimes we reflect on it and we get really absorbed in those feelings. So we now need to take a step on. One of my friends suggested to me that we will sometimes get sad thoughts. They would just come into our mind from nowhere. And he said, imagine a bag, and in the bag, there are three stones. There's a rough stone, a smooth stone, and a diamond. So the difficult thought is the rough stone. Really hard to move on from that, but we can maybe move to a neutral thought. That would be our smooth stone. And then try and reach for the really, the really best thoughts that we can, something really positive. And that could be reminding yourself that you're still the person who's done all the best things you've ever done. So earlier on in that, we saw that what we needed to do was to distract ourselves, to take ourselves away from the difficult situation we find ourselves in. Actually, Distraction can be a bit of a mixed blessing. As human beings, we know that what we're best at is getting started on something, getting all the way through it, 
and getting finished. And particularly if somebody else distracts us, we might think, oh, now I need to start again. But quite often, it's us who distracts ourselves. And studies have looked at this, and distraction, even a positive distraction, looking at something interesting in the middle of a dull task, makes us feel less happy than if we just finish the dull task. So those are some of the things that we're facing. Are we being fair to ourselves in terms of how, we, how satisfied we feel? Are we having attacks from grumpy FM and our inner grumpy selves? And are we getting distracted? But what could we do positively? In preparation for today, I'd ask my friends, please share some of your positive stories, uh, positive places, positive Bible verses, and things that you're really grateful for. And I'd like to start with one of those that really resonated. The words were, be still. And that led me into sleep. Now, I'm a big fan of sleep, and let me explain to you why. So sleep makes you live longer, enhances your memory, and makes you more attractive, keeps you slim and lowers food cravings, protects you from cancer and dementia, wards off colds and flus, lowers your risk of heart attack, stroke and diabetes, and you will feel happier, less depressed and less anxious. So when a few of my friends said, you should give this a try, and it was a long book to read, then I was up for it. It was an interesting journey. So I'd probably gone from, I quite liked staying up, finish watching the film or whatever else was on TV, then go to bed, then woken up in the morning by my alarm. Oh, please have a few more minutes. And there's always a few more minutes, right? Because you can always compress your getting ready time. And then if it was a weekend or even better a holiday, what an opportunity to catch up on all that, on all that missed sleep. So I chose to make a change. And the change that I decided to do was to go to bed a little bit earlier. So I'm a morning person. I've got most energy in the morning. So that was the bit that I wanted to, to leave alone. And so I tried it. And in 15 minute chunks, I got more and more sleep. And my suggestion would be that if this was something you would like to try, then just see what the effect is on you in terms of your energy and your mood of getting more sleep. Great number to get to would be seven and a half or eight hours. But see for you what really works. Now, Dave and I have come out to film in the great outdoors and what a wonderful day it is. When I ask people to share happy places, then many of them picked locations like this. Somewhere out in the woods, in nature. One of my other friends showed the view out of his house. In this case, in the snow. And the change of the seasons is such a great gift to see how things die away and then come, come back. But there's always something in each season. For one of my friends, there was a really special time in their lives. And so they looked at, um, at a scene in America. That was their happy memory. For somebody else, it was just behind where we're filming now, down on, the, down on the Basingstoke Canal. And then the photo that I've submitted, but other people had, uh, had talked about, was the beach. This is East Head down at West Wittering with just a little bit of Google improvement. So the thing that was in common for these happy places was the great outdoors. And David Attenborough suggested that if we stand still and quiet in nature for 10 minutes, you'll be amazed what you see. We know that the Swiss really like the outdoors. They have their forest schools, the Japanese, many of them enjoy forest bathing. And we know from experience that when we get fresh air and daylight and a little bit of exercise, how much better we feel. That can be an important point in the day that helps us to get rid of the sadness and disappointment of what's gone before and get ready and energized for what happens next. 
but just strolling in the outdoors isn't enough for all of my friends. One of my friends loves riding his motorbike, another loves morris dancing. For, for much of my life, I don't think I'd properly understood why we do exercise. I thought it was all about how big a weight can you lift, how fast can you go up a particular hill or around a particular distance. Actually, it's the feeling of being energized and I'd say maybe the feeling of having prioritized your own health and well-being. So how could, how could we get started? Well, one of the ways is to pick something you like, something that maybe you have done in the past or that um, is an extension of something you do today. And actually, even on a cold, dark, wet day, there's stuff we can do in our house. There's lots of free online resources, no equipment required. You could do stretching, you could do a high impact session, you could do cardio. There's a whole range of opportunities. The important thing is to pick something that you really enjoy doing and to do the most fun thing you can do with each exercise slot. So if today the best thing you could do is to go for a brisk walk with a friend, well, let's aim for that. But if on another day, all you can manage is a, is a quick walk around the block or an at-home workout, that's great too. And when I look back on the effect of exercise, somebody commented to me, I come back from the gym, my house feels warmer, I feel more energetic, and I eat better. And that leads us into the topic of food and what better illustration of food than one of Elaine's tray bakes. Something that I've realized is that food has a huge effect on me, both when I eat it and afterwards. If I've just exercised, then probably I'm more likely to have a lighter meal. And one of the advantages of that is that if I've got something really important to do where I need to be really energetic and really on it, then the energy from a lighter meal really helps. Equally, we've got such happy memories associated with food. Celebrations, maybe like a birthday, imagine Christmas Day. You can almost taste the flavours in that food and actually the slump afterwards is all part of it. So food's another thing that can affect our mood, both while we're eating and afterwards. So my suggestion would be to think about the afterwards and, and maybe that could prompt a chance to try something a little bit different in your diet. Could it be a little bit less red meat? Could it be a salad? Could it be a different choice of, of sweet treat? Could it also be an opportunity to make somebody else feel good? At various times in our lives, generally after the birth of a child, we've been blessed with people bringing us wonderful home-cooked food. I think one of the great highlights after our daughter was born was my wife Naomi receiving a fruitcake from my sister. Don't think a fruitcake has ever been so much enjoyed and so welcomed. And that connection with people is really important, as we'll see in the next part. So my friends submitted some photos of things they were grateful for and happy places, and now they're populated with people. What an amazing wedding. You can see in the smiles how joyful everyone was to be together. And as you'll see from the photos, some of it is about the place. Some of it is about the wonderful, great outdoors. But some of it is about the people. If we look at the effect of going back to school in person on children, then you see the change in them when they get to be around other people. It's not only their friends. It's just being in the general environment of around people. And as we've gone through the lockdowns, and we've been restricted. Isn't it amazing how exciting it is to see the postman, somebody in a, in a shop, or the absolute treat of bumping into somebody unexpectedly while you're out on, on your walk. So people make a huge difference to us, not only our best friends, but all those around us. A few years ago, when Andy Murray was at the top of his game 
in semi-finals and finals, then there was a really interesting article that talked about who is with him. And literally with him in the box at Wimbledon, we had his wife, his mum, his head coach, his serving coach, his playing partner. So quite a lot of people you'd expect. But then there was his two managers, his lawyer, his social media manager. The list went on and on. All of those people were there to help him to do the best he could on that day. I'm not sure that I'd like that, to have a whole group of people just there to enable me to be the best, just on standby. But actually, I know that there are lots of people who do care for me and will give me the, the time of day and be there in the moments that I need them. And actually, that's something that, that we can reciprocate, that we're all a little bit there for each other. But of course, circumstances can change. Maybe a particularly good friend from work gets another job. Another good friend moves away to another area. And then we feel the sadness of the gap that they leave behind. And one of the things that's, that's helped me is to think about who are the people who are around me now? Who are the colleagues that I used to really get on with, but we've been on different projects and I haven't seen them? Who are the friends that maybe have drifted a little bit out of touch? And then I found real joy in getting back in contact. And it's amazing how, whether it's a letter, whether it's a phone call, a video call, or when it's possible to do a face-to-face -face meeting, how energising it is for both of us and how often it leads to, please, can we do this again? As part of being good friends to each other, one of the things that is really important is to recognise that we will all have good days and bad days. We probably would reflect on the fact that sometimes when we ask someone how they are and they say they're fine, that there's a bit of a range. There's fine and then there's fine. When you meet someone who's in the second of those states, then it's completely okay to say, oh, that doesn't quite sound like you. How, how are things? How are you feeling at the moment? And then your job isn't to fix things for them. Your job is to let them know that you're a, you're a friend who's there for them and just to listen to them and let them tell you about whatever's, whatever's bothering them. Knowing that one day someone will be in a position to do that for you. So the final part of this is thinking about what can we do that we really enjoy? Maybe we've covered it already, maybe we haven't. So let's just imagine that tomorrow you don't have to do anything. You don't have to go to work, school, your normal routine. You can do whatever you like. What would you do? What would you do with a free day to do whatever you want in it? Maybe it's a musical instrument, maybe it's some crafting, maybe it's something from your childhood you can, you'd like to pick up. Maybe it's the When I Get Time project that everybody has. Perhaps that's something that you could make a start on. Because in amongst all the things we've talked about today, I hope there's been something that's sparked within you and you thought, ooh, I can give myself some ticks. I've been doing quite a lot of those things, but maybe I could add in something else. Maybe there's been a bit of a spark of thinking, oh, I really liked doing whatever it is, but I can't do it at the moment. Maybe I loved running, and at the moment I can't run because I've got an injury. When we're in that second situation, then it makes it even more important to do a better job of the things that are possible. So if we love running and we're not able to run, maybe we could do some stretching. Maybe that's the time to look after our food a bit better or to find more ways to make connections with other people so that while we're going through this season of things being a little bit out of balance, that we're still bringing some things into our life that matter to us. We're giving ourselves permission to do things 
that make us feel better. But it doesn't just happen, right? It feels like time goes by and what sometimes we look back and think, what did we achieve with all that time? And so we need to have a little bit of intention. I know that if I want to go out and ride my bike first thing in the morning, everything needs to be ready before I need to go to bed. The bike needs to be ready, all the bike riding stuff needs to be ready. And so in the morning, when I wake up and think, oh, maybe it is a bit cold, maybe it's not quite perfect, then it's not difficult. I can get ready and get going knowing that a minute into the ride, I'll be really pleased I did it. And then afterwards, I'll reflect back and think, I noticed the benefit of that. And actually, I think for lots of the things that make us feel happier, we begin to see a cumulative benefit. That the exercise that starts off as one 15 minutes session, maybe if done a few times, leads to a benefit that we feel every day. So, we've talked a lot about happiness. Please take a moment now to think about what what really makes you happy and what could, how could you find 15 minutes or even longer to do something that makes you happy over the next week. I've only been able to scratch the surface of quite a lot of topics here today. So if you think you'd like to know some more, then there's a few resources available. One of which is the amazing Happiness Half Hour podcast on BBC Sounds, which will give you lots of background, lots of science and lots of practical things to do. If when we were talking about Grumpy FM, feeling angry what to do about it, made you think, oh, that happens to me, or maybe that happens to somebody in your life, maybe you've got a boss, a friend, who, who really can get consumed by anger, then I can highly recommend The Chimp Paradox by Dr. Steve Peters. If you liked the idea of some of the benefits of sleep and wanted to get started or to get a better understanding of what they, what they really are and the science behind it, then I can recommend Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. Finally, I have been really blessed in the, in the production of today. I've had so many people reach out and help me and I'd really like to recognise the contribution of, uh, of a few people who've made, it, who've made it all possible to talk to you. Glenn has been amazing in giving me the invitation. He's written me so many emails um, to help me work out what we're going to do. Dave came in with the kind offer, which has enabled me to stand in the great outdoors. What better place could there be to talk about happiness than on a sunny day out in nature with a good friend? I've also received a song from Chris and Jilly because I'd reached out to him and said, please could you record something that would work, work well for the theme. My friends, particularly from the Long Straw Life Group, have been a great support. And of course, I recognise I'm part of a big community that within FBC and Frimley and beyond, there are so many people who have been such a great support and part of a big group and that really is something very special and that money can't buy. What I also wanted to recognise is that every week, not just the weeks that I'm doing it, there's a tireless effort, particularly from Glenn, from Dave, from the band, from all the people who contribute. They put in hours and hours, way more work than it ever was when we were together in person. And I just wanted to say a huge thank you. I've had a tiny sample preparing for this of understanding just how much is involved in taking somebody standing in front of a camera and turning it into a polished production to put onto the YouTube channel. So you do an incredible job, people. Please keep it up but looking forward to getting back in person. So we've covered a lot of ground today. We've talked about a lot of science, a lot of knowledge that I've gained from, from books and experience, but actually that's only part of the picture. Something that we have available to us at any time is the, is the love and support of God. We're never completely alone. We probably all recognise times in our lives when 
maybe all seem lost in the bottom of a pit of despair and that might be the time for some of us the only time that we might might begin to pray when we recognize we haven't got complete control over our circumstances God's there for us all the time not only in the sad times not only in the middle times but in the happy times too Mm -hmm. and that's a really important part of our happiness let's pray Father God we thank you for all the wonderful blessings that we've got in our lives the people the places the events we thank you that even when we feel completely alone you're always with us just bless us as we go into this week that you would we would know you with us that where there are people we know who are sick who are sad who have many other needs lord that you would you would be with them lord and that you would give them your peace amen and that brings us to the end of this week's service thank you for being part of it and we hope that you'll be able to join us again next sunday for our palm sunday service may the joy of the lord be your strength this week and may he encourage you as you encourage others you've been listening to fbc radio on 16.9 